Lyria looked at her watch. It was only 7 p.m. Still too early for her. Usually, if she had to work overtime, she would return around 1 or 2, um... All right, I'll be back soon. Lyria complied with her husband's request. She felt so good. After two years, someone other than Estelle was worried about her well-being. Now, Axel also cared for her. Be careful, drive slowly. Let me know when you arrive home. Okay. Give me a kiss. Lyria smiled lightly. Her husband was acting like a teenage boy in love, but she still blew a kiss to her husband. The call ended, and Lyria quickly tidied up her belongings before leaving her office. Lyria's car started to leave the building where she worked. She drove leisurely and entered quiet streets after about 20 minutes of driving. To reach Axelsev's residence, she needed another 35 minutes. Lyria suddenly stopped her car when another vehicle intercepted her in front. She tried to calm her unstable breath, feeling something unpleasant. She was about to reverse her car when a hammer hit her car's window, shattering it. Lyria instinctively raised her arm to shield her eyes. She turned around to avoid the shards of glass that were about to hit her face. Tiger opened the car door and was about to grab Lyria when he was suddenly attacked by someone else. Tiger didn't even notice when the man appeared near him. He tried to fight back, but all his attacks were thwarted, and he received punches and kicks that made him suffer. Tiger couldn't kill Lyria today. He had to run away first. Otherwise, he would be caught. Unfortunately, when he was about to flee, his jacket collar was grabbed by his opponent, and he was thrown against Lyria's car. He wasn't given a chance to get up, he was punched continuously. He even felt his bones breaking, and then he lost consciousness. The man who attacked Tiger turned to Lyria. Miss Lyria, are you hurt? Lyria didn't recognize the man in front of her, but he knew her. From the way he addressed her, it was exactly like how the Axelsev people addressed her. Who are you? I'm Alan, a guard sent by Mr. Axelsev to secretly protect you. The man named Alan replied, Miss? Are you hurt? Lyria checked her body. She wasn't injured at all. I'm not hurt. Okay, then let's get in my car. I'll take you back home. Yes. Lyria got out of her car. She had experienced many bad things in her life, but what happened just now was a first. She couldn't help but tremble. She tried to act strong in front of the Axelsev guards, but honestly, her legs felt weak now. Miss, do we need to go to the hospital to check your condition? Alan asked, glancing at Lyria through the car window. No need. Let's just go home. All right, miss. Alan then escorted Lyria back to Axelsev's residence. Meanwhile, as for Tiger, Alan ordered his comrade to take care of him. Usually, only Alan followed Lyria, but since Axelsev was away, he assigned another guard to protect her. A few minutes later, Lyria arrived at her home. Peter welcomed her immediately. Mom, what would you like for your dinner? I, I already had dinner at the office. You don't need to prepare dinner for me. Lyria lied. She couldn't eat now. Her heart was still pounding. She felt scared. If something had happened to her earlier, what would happen to her mother? The woman who gave birth to her would be left alone to fight for her life. All right, ma'am. Lyria then walked past Peter and headed to her room. She sat on the couch, feeling completely drained. Her phone rang, and she took a deep breath before picking up her gadget. Hello. I heard what happened from Alan. Are you really not hurt? Should I come back right away? I'm fine. No need to come back now. Continue with your work. All right, now rest. If you can't sleep, let me know. I'll accompany you over the phone. Okay. Lyria didn't want to bother Axel Sev. She was used to dealing with difficult situations almost alone. Sometimes, even when she felt desperate, she wouldn't always trouble Estelle, especially when facing the world. She knew it was great to have someone she could rely on, but she also didn't want to appear too weak in front of Axel Sev. Good night, my wife. Good night, my husband. Lyria placed her phone next to her after the call was ended by Axel Sev. Then, she stood up, went to the bathroom, and started cleaning herself. On the other side, Axel Sev had already ordered Alan to find out the motive behind the attack on his wife. If the man who attacked Lyria refused to confess, 
he instructed Alan to pull out each of the man's fingernails and toenails until he confessed. Axelsev knew very well how to make people talk. He was cruel and heartless towards those who disturbed his family, especially his little wife, who had filled his heart. Axelsev would never let Tiger go easily, let alone someone who had ordered Tiger. It would be extremely painful for that person. Lyria had tried to sleep, but she couldn't close her eyes. The experience she had a few hours ago left her feeling insecure. She knew that nothing could harm her while she was at Axelsev's residence with its top-notch security system. However, she could still feel the shards of fear piercing towards her. Lyria spent her time curled up on the bed, her mind wandering, trying to figure out why the man had attacked her. She had offended quite a few people recently, but she hadn't thought about her grandmother or her uncle's family because she didn't believe they would go as far as ordering someone to attack her, no matter how ruthless they were. Her head ached as she pondered, and she finally fell asleep around four in the morning. She woke up three hours later. Although she had only slept for three hours, Lyria was used to having little sleep. She got up from the bed and cleaned herself. When she was done, she immediately dressed up. Her phone rang, and she knew who would be calling her early in the morning. It must be her husband. Good morning, my wife. Good morning, my husband. Did you sleep well last night? Yes. Lyria had slept soundly for three hours. She was probably too tired. You want to know who sent someone to kill you? Lyria was surprised. So it wasn't just an ordinary attack meant to scare her. It was an assassination attempt. Who is it? Try to guess who wants your death the most. Lyria pondered for a moment. There were only a few people who would benefit from her death. And if she was correct, she had underestimated her own family. Her grandmother and her uncle's family had never attacked her before because they needed her alive. But now that she was no longer needed, they would find her more valuable dead so that all the inheritance that should belong to her would go back to them. Lyria knew her conservative grandmother wouldn't directly contact a hitman, but her cunning, sly, manipulative, and greedy aunt would be the mastermind behind it. Is it Mrs. Eugene? Exactly. They apparently wanted the inheritance so badly that they wanted to kill me. Inheritance. Yes, I wanted to tell you when you're back home, but it seems my aunt didn't want to wait. Lyria replied coldly. She had underestimated her own family. They could be even more ruthless than she imagined. Axelsev already knew about the inheritance issue, but he didn't know what Lyria was supposed to receive. Alan had previously told him who else had visited Lyria's grandmother's residence besides Lyria. However, he didn't think those people would go as far as attempting to kill Lyria for the inheritance. I've ordered Alan to hand over the man who tried to kill you to the police. Eugene will end up in jail with an attempted murder charge against you. Axel Sev had a cousin who was a police officer. So Eugene would be taken care of properly. The Leander family came from a military background, but Axel Sev's grandfather chose a different path in business, while his uncle's younger brother was still in the military. The children of Axel Sev's uncle were soldiers and policemen, as well as their spouses and grandchildren. Additionally, Axel Zev's mother came from a political family and her brother was a president while her youngest brother was an attorney general. That was why the Leander family was highly respected on the continent because they were a large family with a very strong foundation. Thank you, my husband. You really like saying thank you, huh? Do it properly when I come back. Lyria already knew what was on Axel Zev's mind. Okay, I will do it properly. You made me want to come back soon, my wife. Don't be silly. All right, all right. From today onwards, Alan and Mason will accompany you wherever you go. I don't want anything undesirable to happen to you again. Initially, Axel Sev didn't want to openly send guards because he didn't want Lyria to feel bothered. But now that this had happened, he had to let the guards be closer to Lyria. Lyria did feel a little uncomfortable because she thought it might be excessive considering she was just a junior fashion designer in the company. Even the top executives of the company weren't guarded so strictly. However, she knew that Axel Sev's intentions were good. He cared for her and didn't want anything bad to happen to her. 
Therefore, she wouldn't argue with Axel Sev's words. What he did was for her own good. So how could she complain? All right. Use any car you want to drive. Your car is no longer usable. How can it not be usable? Just fix the windows. It's still functional. The police took it as evidence. Axelsev only provided an excuse. In truth, he wanted Lyria to use a much safer and more comfortable vehicle. When will it be returned to me? Lyria cherished that car. She bought it by saving money from her salary. After everything is settled, Lyria didn't reply anymore. Have you had breakfast? I will go for breakfast in a moment. Um, okay, go for breakfast. I have to go for a meeting now. Yes. Axelsev ended the call. He took time out of his busy schedule to greet Lyria in the morning while being away from her. However, Lyria hadn't properly reciprocated his attention. She didn't ask if Axelsev had slept well last night or if he had had breakfast. Lyria always felt that she was really lacking in attention towards Axelsev. He had given her so much, but she hadn't given anything in return except for sharing warmth on the bed with him. She promised herself that she would pay more attention to Axelsev in the future. She also wanted to get to know her husband better about what he liked and disliked, as well as about his life. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Eugene had been visited by a police team. It was still very early in the morning, but they had done their job. They had evidence in the form of a recording of Tiger and Eugene's conversation as well as photos of Eugene meeting Tiger at the tea house. Samuel immediately stood up from his seat and faced the police team that had come. Good morning, sir. I'm here to arrest Mrs. Eugene for the attempted murder of Mrs. Lyria Valleta. The officer showed Samuel the arrest warrant. Eugene's face turned pale. Sir, this must be a mistake. I didn't do it. It's a frame-up. Not only Eugene, but Mallory and Keitlin were also shocked. They knew about the murder plan. Mama Eugene, please provide your statement at the police station. Please come with me. No, I won't go to the police station. Eugene refused to cooperate. Her reputation would be ruined if she ended up in jail. Mala, please help me. I don't want to go to the police station. Mallory didn't know what to do. If her daughter-in-law spoke, she would likely be arrested by the police as well. Eugene, don't worry. Your husband and I will get you out of the police station. Mallory tried to calm Eugene. Husband, please help me. I don't want to go to the police station. Eugene turned to her husband. Samuel also didn't want his wife to be taken to the police station. At the moment, his company was facing difficulties despite receiving help from the Brooks family. He really didn't want any more problems. He was already stressed, even losing sleep over how to save his company. Both Samuel, Mallory, and Caitlin couldn't stop the police from taking Eugene away. However, it didn't stop there. Reporters were waiting outside the Chaster family's residence. With this, the case couldn't be hidden. The reporters swarmed around Eugene like moths to a flame. Eugene used to be a famous former celebrity, so the news outlets had a strong reason to bombard her with various questions. The police team, who should have taken Eugene to the car, allowed reporters to pelt Eugene with questions. Mrs. Eugene, is it true that you attempted to murder your niece? One reporter asked bluntly. Eugene's image as a gentle and charitable woman finally crumbled. It's a frame-up. I didn't do it. Mrs. Eugene, there's a recording circulating of how you and your family tried to use your niece as a bargaining chip to gain profits. Can you respond to this? Please give a statement. Other reporters asked questions that were very annoying to Eugene. Mrs. Eugene, is it true that you mistreated your niece? It's all false. It's a frame up. It's not true. After the reporters had taken enough pictures, the police team finally put Eugene in the car. With news of Eugene's arrest spread on television and printed in online newspapers, it was enough to please their superiors. So, is it true that the woman almost killed by her aunt is your wife, as mentioned by your grandmother? Caleb Leander, Axelsev's cousin, who was a high-ranking police officer, looked at Axelsev with a hint of curiosity. 
He happened to be in the same city because of official duties and took the opportunity to meet his cousin. Yes, she is my wife. Axel Sev, you really surprised me. For 27 years, you were never close to any woman. But suddenly, you marry someone. Ah, right. Amanda must be heartbroken after finding out that you're married. It's none of my concern. Axel Sev replied shortly. He knew that Amanda, his adopted sister, had been in love with him since they were teenagers. But Axel Sev had no feelings for her. He wasn't even that close to the woman who had saved his life when he was young. True. It's none of your concern. The fault lies with her for falling in love with you. Caleb remarked, not wanting to upset Axelsev. In the Leander family, people thought that Amanda would be Axelsev's future wife. But as time went on, Axelsev still showed no interest in her. That was why the Leander family stopped pinning their hopes on Amanda and began introducing Axelsev to other women. When will you bring your wife to our big family? I'm really curious about the woman who managed to capture the heir to the Leander group's heart. Caleb was genuinely interested to handle the woman who attempted to kill his wife. Axelsev had directly contacted his uncle, who was the head of the police in the country. I will definitely introduce her to the entire Leander family. Mallory went to the company where Lyria worked, accompanied by Kaitlin. They needed to speak with Lyria to convince her to withdraw the report against Eugene. Since they couldn't reach Lyria, the only way to meet her was to go to the company where she worked. What are you doing here? Lyria looked at Caitlin and Mallory coldly. She despised these two women in front of her. Lyria, you're really shameless. How dare you report my mother to the police? Lyria snorted sarcastically. So do you think I should just stay quiet when your mother tried to kill me? You damn whore. Eugene is your grandmother. You lived in our house for two years, and we spent money for two years to treat your mother and cover your living expenses. Is this how you repay us? Mrs. Mallory, have you forgotten that my father's 20% share was worth more than the money you spent on my mother's treatment and my living expenses during my stay in your house? She couldn't believe Mallory had the audacity to bring up accounts when the woman had already seized 20% of her father's shares in the past leaving him with nothing in Chaster Construction. He had to start his own business from scratch. Those shares were given willingly by your father, Lyria. You took them away, Mrs. Mallory. Lyria replied angrily. She had been patient with the Chaster family for far too long. The only one who made her feel a sense of kinship there was her late grandfather. Mallory's hands trembled, wanting to slap Lyria. She couldn't stand being defied like this by Lyria. Shut your mouth and withdraw your report at the police station. The Chyster family's reputation will be ruined because of you. Why because of me? Didn't you think twice before planning to kill me? This is the price you have to pay. I will witness your destruction. Listen carefully. I won't withdraw my report. I want Mrs. Eugene to rot in jail. Lyria. Mallory and Kaitlin exclaimed in unison, Me, Mrs. Mallory, you will spend your old age in a prison full of criminals. You will rot there along with your criminal daughter-in-law, and the company you cherish will crumble, as well as the Chaster family's reputation that you're so proud of. And you, Kaitlin, no family will want you as a daughter-in-law, because your mother and grandmother are criminals. Lyria exclaimed cynically. After saying that, Lyria left Mallory and Kaitlin, not even looking back despite their orders for her to stay. Lyria wouldn't give in to these people again. She wanted them all to pay for everything they had done to her. They had trampled over her family since she was a child, always acting unfairly and taking what rightfully belonged to them. Now, Lyria would turn the tables. She would trample over them and take back what was rightfully hers. Even if she didn't want to have everything they had, she wouldn't let them keep it either. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Rosin's father had seen the news of Eugene's arrest. There was no way he could tolerate Eugene's actions. He would become a subject of ridicule with a criminal daughter-in-law. In law like her, moreover, rumors about the Scheister family were getting out of control, and the Brooks family's reputation was being talked about as well immediately withdraw the investment in Jaister Construction. 
he ordered his personal assistant. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Also, gather the media. Today, Raisin will announce the cancellation of the engagement with the Chaister family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Alexei, the personal assistant, immediately carried out his superior's orders. In the room, Alexei was not the only one present. Raisin was there, too. He was growing disgusted with the Chaister family, not just for framing and exploiting Lyria, but also for attempting to kill her. They were truly cruel. Raisin was grateful that his father finally had a reason to approve of breaking off the engagement with Caitlin. For the past few days, he had been avoiding Caitlin and had even blocked her number. Razin, gather all the evidence of Caitlin's deceit. Today, you must break off the relationship with that woman. Yes, father. Razin would not waste this opportunity. Meanwhile, Samuel's secretary reported some bad news. Sir, it's really bad. The company's stock price continues to fall. Shareholders have sold all their stocks. Additionally, Brooks Corporation withdrew their investment in the company. Samuel slumped in his seat. His worst fears were coming true. With this situation, Chaster Construction would declare bankruptcy in less than a week. He couldn't accept it. He called Alexei. Mr. Alexei, why did you withdraw the investment in Chaster Construction? Are you really unaware of the reason, Mr. Samuel? I am a businessman seeking profit. Your company will incur losses for me, so it's clear that I had to withdraw my investment to avoid substantial losses. Mr. Alexei, we were about to become in-laws soon. How could you turn your back on me like this? Besides, Caitlin had nothing to do with the current situation. Do you think I'm a fool? Your daughter is just as dreadful as her mother and wife. How could such a venomous snake be part of the Brooks family? Never contact me again. We have no relationship in the future. After that, Alexei hung up. Samuel threw his phone to the floor. Damn it. It's all because of Eugene's foolishness. She's destroyed everything. Samuel blamed his wife. He thought he could still save the company if it wasn't for her tarnishing the Shyster family's reputation. But what he didn't know was that even without Eugene causing such a huge problem, the Chyster family's company would still crumble. Raisin stood in front of the neatly arranged reporters in the designated area. He announced that he had decided to break off the engagement with Caitlin Chyster due to her bad personality. In the end, Raisin didn't reveal the facts about Caitlin's deception for the past two years. He didn't want to be ridiculed by others. Back at Kaitlin's residence, she had seen the news spreading online. Her face turned pale. She hadn't even executed her plan yet because it was difficult to meet with Raisin, but now he had already announced the cancellation of the engagement with her. Kaitlin couldn't accept it. She immediately left her residence and went to meet Raisin. If Razin really dumped her, no prestigious family would ever accept her. She couldn't let Lyria's words come true. Raisin would still be hers. After arriving at Raisin's company, Kaitlin quickly went to his office. She was certain that Raisin would be there. For the past few days, Raisin had been overseas, so she couldn't meet him. Razin, what did you just announce to the media? I broke off the relationship with you. Now leave because we have no relationship. A woman like you will never be my wife. Do you think Lyria can be your wife then? Don't dream, Razin. Lyria already has another man. Kylan said cynically. Her gentle demeanor had completely vanished. I won't believe that she truly has another man by her side. Lyria still loves me. That's evident since she hasn't been in a relationship with anyone after we broke up. She still hopes for us. Right now, she's just playing hard to get, but after I persuade her a few times, she will come back to me. Razin stubbornly believed that Lyria had no one else. She was just pretending to play hard to get, and he was confident that she would come back to him. Leave from here. I don't want to see you anymore. You can't just push me out of your life like this, Razin. I'm pregnant, and it's your child. I don't want that child. Get rid of it. Razin... I will tell the media that you are an irresponsible man. See how I destroy your reputation. Caitlin, this is your real face. Raisin looked at Caitlin sharply. 
indeed this is me. So, Rosin, I won't give up easily. I'm carrying your child. If you won't marry me, watch how I ruin your name. Kaitlin pressed. They were now inside Raisin's car. Who knows if that child is really mine or not? Rosin continued to deny Kaitlin. Rosin, don't go too far. You have to marry me. The fetus inside me is your child. My parents will never allow you to enter the Brooks family. I can't marry you. I don't care. You must marry me or I will go crazy. You win, Caitlin. I will marry you. Caitlin felt satisfied. Her plan had succeeded. No matter how much her family was ruined, as long as she became the young lady of the Brooks family, her life would be secured. However, Lyria didn't know what Axelsev liked, so she only bought shrimp and some other seafood, hoping he would enjoy it. Lyria began cooking. Earlier, Axelsev had mentioned that he would be back before dinner. The delightful smell quickly spread through the kitchen a few moments later. Lyria was very familiar with the kitchen. She often accompanied her mother while cooking before her parents had their accident. She believed that she should also become skilled in cooking like her mother so that, in the future, when she married Raisin, she would receive many praises for her delicious meals. In the past, Lyria had often prepared food for Rosin. She would have the driver deliver it to him to ensure he didn't skip meals. Raisin had a sensitive stomach, so Lyria paid special attention to his meals. In the past, she always had Raisin in her thoughts, believing that showing him her love in every way possible would make him trust her more. Little did she know that it wasn't enough to earn Raisin's complete trust. Lyria sighed heavily, realizing that she had wasted her time on someone as worthless as Rosin in the past. Fortunately, she remained rational and didn't fall into despair after Raisin's betrayal, despite loving him with all her heart. Raisin's betrayal was one of the reasons why Lyria had not pursued any relationship with anyone in the last two years. She couldn't entrust her heart to anyone else. Until she met Axelsev, she was willing to try again. Lyria believed that Axelsev was not like Raisin at all. It would be an insult to compare Axelsev with Raisin. After setting the dinner table, Lyria went to her room to spray some perfume on herself. She felt like she smelled like the food she cooked. Looking at the clock on the wall, Lyria thought that Axelsev should be back by now. She took her phone and called her husband. At the same time, the bedroom door opened. Axelsev waved his phone at Lyria and approached his wife with a warm smile on his face. Lyria also went over and embraced Axelsev warmly. Didn't wait for me to come home. Mm. Axelsev teased his wife. Did your work go smoothly? Lyria asked, not responding to her husband's playful question. Everything went smoothly. Axelsev replied, then gently kissed Lyria's lips. He couldn't resist those plump red lips. Lyria allowed Axelsev to kiss her, but stopped him when his mischievous hands started to wander under her nightgown. Let's have dinner first. I've prepared dinner for you. Lyria said, catching Axelsev's hand. You cooked it yourself. Yes. All right then, let's have dinner. And after that, I'll devour you," Axelsev said, kissing Lyria's soft cheek. Lyria blushed. She was still not used to Axelsev's vulgar words. She quickly walked ahead, knowing her husband would tease her if he saw her blushing. Arriving at the dining table, Lyria took her seat. Axelsev stood for a moment, observing the dinner menu on the table, then sat down. My wife seems to be very talented in the kitchen. Axelsev looked at his wife tenderly. Come on, let's taste the food before it gets too cold. All right, I'll try it now. Axelsev took the shrimp, peeled it, and began eating. Lyria watched carefully. How does it taste? Delicious. Then eat more. Of, of course, uh, how can I waste my wife's cooking? Axelsev tasted the other seafood dishes. He enjoyed the taste of each one. Elliot Leander. Axelsev's 24-year-old younger brother walked into the dining room. He should have come earlier, but he had work and couldn't come directly when their grandmother mentioned Lyria. Elliot! Axelsev looked at his brother in confusion. Elliot hadn't informed them 
he was visiting tonight. Lyria glanced at Elliot. She didn't know who he was, but considering the way he called Axelsev brother, he must be a family member. Oh my god, what are you eating, brother? Are you trying to kill yourself? Lyria didn't understand what Elliot was saying. Is there something wrong with my cooking? There's nothing wrong with your cooking, sister-in-law. It's just that my brother is allergic to seafood. Damn it. Why didn't you tell me anything? Spit it out. Axelsev looked annoyed. An exaggerate, all. What do you mean, exaggerate? You'll die if you eat too much seafood. Lyria was shocked. She had no idea it was that serious. Let's go to the hospital. Um, it's okay. Um, I just need to take some medication. Look, your skin is turning red. Elliot pointed to the red spots on Axelsev's lips. Please help me take Axel to the hospital. Lyria said to Elliot. Axelsev sighed. He really hated his allergy to seafood. All right, all right, let's go to the hospital. He didn't want to worry, Lyria. Let my wife help me walk. Axelsev refused Elliot's assistance. Elliot looked at his brother in disbelief. This was what happened when his brother fell in love with someone. He seemed like their father, who appeared tough on the outside, but turned into a very gentle and pampered cat when facing his wife. Elliot drove them, taking his brother to the best hospital in the city. You're being silly. You should have told me about your seafood allergy. I can my wife cook for me. How could I not eat it? Lyria gave Axel Seven irritated look. You're so unreasonable. Look at what happened to you. You're covered in a rash. She gazed at Axelsev's reddening face. Axelsev smiled softly. Okay, I was wrong. I won't do it again in the future. Elliot almost hit the sidewalk curb because of his brother's unexpected behavior. Act properly, El. Axelsev scolded. Don't act all normal, brother. I almost crashed because you were acting like a docile kitten. Axelsev ignored Elliot's words and simply held his wife's hand gently. Do you feel uncomfortable or short of breath? I'm fine, I... I... Axelsev replied calmly, even though he was starting to itch. Are you worried about me? Is it even a question? You're my husband, of course, I'm worried. Elliot regretted driving his brother. He should have left this task to Sylvian. He couldn't handle seeing his brother's romantic gestures with his wife. Axelsev chuckled softly. Don't worry, I'll be fine after the doctor takes care of me. Elliot didn't believe it. His brother was really pushing it. I'm going to crash if you keep acting like this. Stay normal, brother. I'm starting to think you're like a docile kitten, too. Elliot's words didn't phase Axelsev, who held his wife's hand even tighter. A few minutes later, they arrived at the hospital, and the best doctor there treated Axelsev. The doctor was close to Axelsev, so he was aware of his seafood allergy. Axelsev, don't you know you're allergic to seafood? It seems you're tempting fate now. You're lucky you came in time. Otherwise, it could have been life-threatening. Eager, the doctor treating Axelsev, spoke sternly. Axelsev was aware of his allergy, but he still ate his wife's cooking. He was indeed foolish. Lyria felt even more guilty, thinking that if Elliot hadn't come earlier, she might have been responsible for Axelsev's death. After receiving an IV and allergy medication, Axelsev returned home after a few hours of observation. Now, he leaned against the bed's headboard with rashes all over his body, which would not disappear easily. Axelsev remembered that he hadn't introduced Elliot to Lyria. My wife, this is Elliot Leander, my brother. Hello, brother-in-law. Nice to meet you. I should have greeted you properly today, but I didn't expect someone to suddenly turn into an idiot. Hello, Elliot. Nice to meet you, too. Lyria smiled lightly. Elliot had a face not much different from Axelsev's. Brother-in-law, this is for you. I forgot to give it to you earlier. Elliot handed over a gift he had prepared for Lyria as a token of introduction. Lyria looked at Axelsev. He had already received a bracelet from his grandmother, and now, another gift. She felt uneasy. Take it, Axelsev said, prompting Lyria to accept the gift. When she opened it, it was a set of jewelry that Estelle had mentioned to her before. Lyria hadn't expected to receive such an extravagant set of jewelry. This is too expensive. I can't accept it. It's nothing. You can take it. My brother might give you the whole world, so you should learn to accept things gradually. Elliot advised Lyria. From what he had seen, his brother would give his wife everything she deserved. 
and if he could pick a star, he would give it to her. Oh, you're very good at treating your sister-in-law, Axel Sieve said, satisfied with the gift from his brother. Elliot smiled proudly. There was no way he would casually give gifts to his sister-in-law, especially since his brother had chosen her himself. Brother, I'll be staying here tonight. Is that all right? It's okay. Oh, I, by the way, since you can eat seafood, you don't mind if you eat my wife's cooking, right? Axel Sev didn't want his wife's cooking to go to waste, so it would be better for Elliot to eat it instead. I can finish it. Lyria sat at the edge of the bed. Would you like me to cook something else for dinner? Go need my wife. All right, then. I'm here. I'll tell you about my family. Since Elliot is here now, the others will probably come soon, too. Axelzev wanted Lyria not to be surprised when meeting his extensive family. He had already informed his parents. If they wanted to visit, they would have to let him know first so as not to scare Lyria. Axelsev showed Lyria a family photo on his phone, including his grandparents, parents, and twin brother. This is my grandfather, um, Blake Lander. I just I chastised this my grandmother, who you've met a few days ago. This is Alistair Leander, my father, this is Charlotte Winder, my mother. This is Elliot, and this is my twin sister, Acela Leander. Axel Zev introduced his father's family, and then his mother's family, along with his two younger brothers. Lyria was truly surprised to learn about Axel Zev's family, filled with influential individuals. She couldn't help but feel out of place among them, considering her orphan status and her vegetative mother. She feared his family might not easily accept her. Oh, by the way, my parents also have an adopted daughter named um, Amanda Leander. She's the one who saved me in the past. Lyria made sure to remember all the information Axelsev told her so that she could behave properly and not make his family dislike her. Oh, I almost forgot my wife. There's a possibility that my family will come to meet you in person. They'll be very happy to meet you, Axelsev said confidently, though Lyria was not as sure. She, an orphan with a mother in a vegetative state, clearly had a very low status. She thought that Axelsev's family might find it difficult to accept her. Lyria would remember everything Axelsev said correctly, so she could behave in a way that wouldn't make Axelsev's family dislike her. Today, Mallory visited Eugene at the police station. She had to save herself. Lyria's words from yesterday kept her from getting a good night's sleep. She didn't want to spend the rest of her life in jail. Mom! Eugene's tears immediately fell when he saw his mother-in-law visiting him. She had only been imprisoned for a short time, but her face looked unkempt. Signs of aging, which used to be subtle, were now clearly visible. Mom, get me out of here quickly! I will die if I stay in this wretched place any longer. Eugene complained desperately. He was used to living comfortably. How could he survive in the cold prison? There's no way to get you out of here, Eugene. Mallory said harshly. What do you mean, Mom? Why is there no way? You have to help me get out of here no matter what. Bribe the police higher-ups. Hire the best lawyer for me. Do you think we haven't tried? The police higher-ups wouldn't help even when offered a large sum of money. Besides, no lawyer wants to defend you. Mallory retorted truthfully. How can that be? With the choice of family's influence, it's impossible for no one to help. You still dare to mention the Chyster family's influence after the foolishness you've done? You've dragged the Chyster family into ruin, along with the company. And because of your actions, the Brooks family also broke off the engagement with the Chyster family. Eugene lost all his strength. It couldn't be true. How could they fall so quickly? Now shut your mouth and never drag me into the mess you created. I will take care of Kaitlin well, but if you drag me in, Kaitlin won't have any support. Mom, meet Lyria. Ask her to withdraw her complaint so I can get out of here. Eugene said with panic, fear evident in his eyes. Kaitlin and I have already met Lyria, but that wretched woman refuses to withdraw her complaint. That damn whore! Eugene exclaimed angrily. Everything happening to him now was all because of Lyria. 
If only she had willingly given up the inheritance she received from her father-in-law, he wouldn't have tried to kill her. Eugene's hatred for Lyria grew, and he believed that someone behind her must be powerful. He had been thinking about it in prison. Tiger would never reveal the truth unless he was pressured heavily. Eugene thought that Lyria might be connected to a mafia boss or something similar. Now there's no way out for you. Remember my words? Well, shut your mouth or Keitlin won't have support from anyone. Eugene hated his current situation. He didn't want to be alone in prison because his mother-in-law was involved in this mess too, but he also couldn't drag her down because, as Mallory said, Keitlin wouldn't have any support. The Shyster family was already ruined, and the engagement between Caitlin and Raisin couldn't be maintained. His daughter wouldn't be able to find a suitable husband. For the sake of his daughter, he had to give in. Meanwhile, elsewhere, Caitlin was having dinner with her best friend, Tamara. People around them looked at Caitlin with judgmental eyes. The restaurant they were in was frequented by the wealthy some of whom knew Kaitlin well as they belonged to the same upper-class social circle. Since yesterday, Kaitlin and her family had become the subject of discussions among many people. The television and print media seemed to confirm the rumors that had spread in their circle. Those who once praised the family were now criticizing them. As it turned out, the family had deceived everyone by pretending to be good in public while being corrupt inside. If they could be cruel to their own family, they surely could be even worse to others. Kaitlin couldn't stand the gaze of everyone around her. She felt like she could hear them talking about her. It made her ears and heart burn. Tamara, who was having dinner with Kaitlin, also felt the effect. She couldn't possibly continue being friends with Kaitlin for long, as it would make her the subject of gossip too. Kaitlin. I feel stomach ache. I'll go to the restroom for a moment. Tamara grabbed her bag and went to the restroom, then came out from there. She avoided passing Kaitlin's table so that Kaitlin couldn't see her leaving the restaurant. Kaitlin glanced at the time. Tamara had been in the restroom for too long. Kaitlin finally followed her, but she couldn't find anyone in the restroom. Kaitlin called Tamara. Where are you now? Kaitlin! I can't be friends with you anymore, Tamara said cruelly. Their friendship meant nothing to her. So you're leaving me too, Tamara? Caitlin, you know what your reputation and your family's reputation are out there. I don't want to ruin my reputation by being friends with you. This is the last time we talk. After this, you and I are strangers. The call ended with Tamara's harsh words. Kaitlin couldn't contain her anger and threw her phone to the floor. Even Tamara had left her now. The woman who said she would be her lifelong friend had now abandoned her. Kaitlin glared at herself angrily in the mirror. All right, Tamara, you want to leave me because you don't want your reputation to be ruined, right? Watch what I'll do to you. The woman left in anger, went back to her residence, and took another phone. She had several disgusting videos of Tamara with some men. By spreading those videos, Tamara's reputation would be utterly ruined. Let's see which decent family would accept someone like Tamara. I chased her construction at the lowest price, then sent Samuel to jail. Yes, sir. Sylvian immediately carried out the orders. It was easy for Axel Sev to destroy Shaster construction. But because his wife wanted it, he only made the company fail so that he could buy it at a cheap price. Axelsev was not hesitant to spend a lot of money for his wife, but he also didn't want to buy Shyster Construction at a high price. With a small amount of money, all of Samuel's assets would be seized because he couldn't repay the debt. Axelsev would never let a scoundrel like Samuel go. As for Mallory and Kaitlin, Axelsev imposed the harshest punishment on both women. How could they withstand the fall from such a height? Those who usually lived with a lot of money had to experience what it felt like to have no money at all. Axelsef wanted Mallory and Kaitlin to experience despair and humiliation. He wanted them to suffer worse than what Lyria felt. 
After Sylvian left, Lyria entered Axel Sev's office. Why are you here? You're not fully recovered yet. Go back to your room and rest. Axel Sev stood up from his seat and approached his wife, who should not have been working at this hour. How did you come home so early? I was worried about you, so I came back earlier. Lyria replied. She couldn't work peacefully with her sick husband at home. She felt guilty. She shouldn't have worked today, but she thought she had already taken some time off recently, and she didn't want to lose her job due to a lack of discipline. Axel Sef pulled Lyria into his arms. Her words made him happy. I'm fine now. No, you're not fine yet. Look, your face is still red even though the spots have disappeared. Lyria stared closely at Axel Sev's face. A warm feeling spread in Axel Sev's chest. He smiled slightly and in the next moment gently and deeply kissed Lyria's lips. This woman belonged to him and would always be his. The door opened. Their kiss was interrupted. They looked towards the door and found Elliot standing there frozen. I didn't see anything. Please continue. Elliot turned around and left. Lyria wanted to bury herself in the ground. It was embarrassing to get caught like this. Um, it seems I have to send Elliot for another lesson in etiquette. He didn't even knock before entering. Axel Sev grumbled unhappily. His younger brother had interrupted their pleasant moment. Meanwhile, outside, Elliot hurriedly left his brother's office. He intended to tell his brother that he would be leaving for a while to meet his childhood friends. Who would have thought he would see things he shouldn't have seen? Elliot was sure that his brother would scold him, but he wasn't at fault. He was used to not knocking before entering his brother's office at their home, so he thought it would be the same here. Besides, he knew that Lyria had gone to work earlier so he didn't think his sister-in-law would be in his brother's office. Damn it. Damn it. Elliot grumbled irritably. He immediately left his brother's residence. His phone rang. He quickly answered the call from his twin sister. What's up, Ella? Where are you right now? I want to visit brother's residence. I'm just about to go out. If you want to come, do it before dinner. Why before dinner? because you'll have the chance to taste sister-in-law's cooking. Is she very good at cooking? Yes, her cooking is delicious. What gift did you give sister-in-law? Asela asked, making sure she wouldn't give the same gift as her twin brother. In some of their friends' birthdays, she and her twin brother always gave the same gift. I gave her a limited edition F jewelry set. You damn bastard! So, you're the one who bought it. I've been eyeing that jewelry set since it was first announced. Acela's voice sounded loud. Ella, you can buy another jewelry set. I have to give the best gift to my sister-in-law. Fine. I'll forgive you this time. Acela accepted Elliot's explanation. She always got what she wanted, but this time, the jewelry set she had her eyes on was given to her sister-in-law, so she wouldn't pursue it further. I'll drive now. Okay, be careful on the road. You, too. The conversation between the twins ended. Elliot would go to meet his friends, while Acela would visit her brother's residence outside the city. She would arrive before dinner, ensuring whether her twin brother had exaggerated or not. If her sister-in-law's cooking was indeed as delicious as her twin brother claimed, it would be good for her brother, who often didn't eat regularly. Having a wife who was good at cooking would take care of her brother's eating problems. With just this fact, Acela was satisfied with her sister-in-law, even though she had never met the woman before. Tonight, Lyria prepared a suitable menu for Aksasev, who was still in the recovery phase. She cooked a refreshing meat soup. Additionally, there were three other dishes to stimulate Aksasev's appetite. The doctor had advised that for Aksasev's recovery, he should manage his rest and eating patterns properly. Axelsev observed the dishes on the table and then sat down immediately. Earlier, Lyria had asked him what he wanted for dinner and he expressed his desire for something spicy. However, Lyria didn't grant his wish. 
as she believed spicy food wouldn't be suitable for him at the moment. In the end, he said he would eat whatever Lyria cooked. Lyria knew very well that Axelsev would indeed do that. It was evident from the fact that he still ate seafood despite being severely allergic to it. Do you not like tonight's dinner menu? I like it. Then you should eat more. All right, my dear. Um... As footsteps entered the dining room, Lyria and Axelsev shifted their gaze. Evening, brother. Sister-in-law. The pleasant, sweet voice made them turn. Axelsev was confronted with his sibling, arriving without prior notice. It seemed like his twin sibling loved showing up during dinner time. Oh, why visit at this hour, L.A.? Acela smiled sweetly, knowing her brother would surely ask this question. I wanted to have dinner with you and sister-in-law. She answered honestly. Hello, sister-in-law. I'm Acela. Nice to meet you. Acela turned her attention to Lyria. Lyria didn't expect Axelsev's siblings to welcome her so warmly. She hadn't been accepted in her own family which led her to think that others might have difficulty accepting her as well. Hi, Acela. Nice to meet you too. Come sit down and have dinner with us. Thank you, sister-in-law. Acela promptly sat down. Oh, right. This is a gift for you, sister-in-law. I hope you like it. Acela handed over a present she had brought with sincerity. Lyria received her third gift from the Leander family members. She accepted it and opened it immediately. A diamond-studded limited edition watch lay inside. Lyria wouldn't dare underestimate the value of this timepiece. The Leander family's children had a lot of money. Do you like it, sister-in-law? It's beautiful. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Can we start eating now? Acela shifted her gaze to her brother. Eat away. Acela smiled enthusiastically. Enjoy your meal, brother. Sister-in-law. She then began tasting Lyria's dishes. Axelsev also started eating. He wouldn't let his sister finish his wife's food. Damn! He had to compete with his sibling over food. It seemed that in the future, he would have to warn his siblings not to come during dinner time again. Acela watched as Lyria kept adding food to her brother's plate, and each time, he would finish it without complaint. Acela was certain that if her brother continued like this, his once Boxy belly would become round, and his sharp cheeks would become fuller. Just imagining it made Acela cringe. She had to warn her brother to exercise regularly. Otherwise, his wife might turn to other men. As a woman, Acela understood the standards that other women liked, especially since her sister-in-law was very beautiful. Don't keep serving me food. You should eat too. Axelsev served food for his wife. Seeing the clear affection in front of her, Acela sighed. She was two years older than her sister-in-law, yet her brother had found a husband before her. Where could she find a man as good as her father and brother? She had extremely high standards for men. Dinner passed peacefully. Axelsev ate until his stomach was almost full. Brother, sister-in-law, tonight I'll stay here. Is that all right? Uh, you can stay here, Axelsev said. He wouldn't let his younger sister wander around at midnight. In the Leander family, Acela was a carefully guarded gem. That's why Acela had become accustomed to getting everything she wanted, as her family always provided it for her. The Leander family was a loving family. Although Axelsev's parents had an arranged marriage, they lived harmoniously and loved each other.